We are live and good to go. Um, so yeah, let's go, shall we? Oh man, dude, seeing this new like uh, screen over here is like absolutely epic. It is uh, epic beyond proportion. I'm gonna be waiting around for like a few minutes here so people can. Uh... Uh, can I want to update this? No, not right now. Um, the campaign should be probably pretty, pretty fine. So, yeah, the day what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing the campaign here. The new new campaign. Uh, first. Uh, yes, indeed, now, right? Hey, Jalal. Hey, Jupiter. And, yeah, I'm very, very excited to hear for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, damn. Woohoo! Yeah. The, the new campaign. Yeah. So a new campaign is going to be like a really nice way to learn factory. It's you know, the way that they apply, the heroes, and so on, you know? By playing this, we're going to be like probably pretty well accustomed to the new faction. We'll also get like the new lore. We'll get, uh, yeah, everything, you know? I feel like the campaign is going to be like a pretty nice starting point to getting to know everything. There is a no factory. So that is going to be what we're doing. What the fuck is it really out after all these years? Yes. Factory 24 hour stream. Probably not 24 hour, but I'm gonna be live like a lot, okay? So I felt like doing like 24 hours immediately and then, you know, like kinda dying out a little bit after. I don't want that, but I wanna be like active every single day for quite a few hours. So I'm probably gonna be doing like 10 hour streams, like back to back and uh, yeah, streaming as much as I can, but during like uh, reasonable hours. So that is what I'm thinking of doing, and yeah, hopefully that's gonna be nice. Hey, Nexido. Hey, Limerick. And yeah, hey, Tomix. Happy New Year's, everyone. This one is gonna be great, I hope. Nice. Hey, kitty. Um, so yeah. Hey, let's do Black Alter Dragons with, uh, Melchior. Don't know who Melchior was, and, uh, not sure. Maybe at some point. This is freaking ridiculous. Factory, it's a new year's gift. Yeah. Quite the gift it is, huh? Hey, Raquel. Bad timing. I watch Riona instead of going to store to get food. Oh, I see. Now that was an oversight on your part. Now you will either have to get starved for the campaign content. That's gonna be amazing. Or you have to get starved for food. I think the choice between the two is pretty clear, but uh, you do you, you know? And the New Year's resolution, like, same? I mean, I wish 1k already. Maybe I'll like, get the uh, top 10 lobby. And that's pretty reasonable with the recent uh, reset, so maybe that. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna be going on to click New Game, Campaign, Horn of the Abyss, and we have Forged in Fire! So, yeah. This is gonna be a small map, eh? And yeah, this is the new campaign. And the new campaign, by the way, is said to be, like, really hard. Or actually, like, decently easy. The difficulty here does not only affect your starting resources, it will not only affect, like, uh, the AI, but it will also affect, like, the literal map that we're going to be playing and the way that we have to actually, like, uh, solve some of the things. That is what was said. So the impossible difficulty scales everything. And it should be a very challenging, very fun experience. So, it will require probably quite a bit of ingenuity, hero stream knowledge, and so on. It should be absolutely... <clears throat> yeah, it should be absolutely, absolutely amazing, though. <coughs> I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to, like, do that well in Impossible Difficulty. But I'm gonna be doing my best here, okay? So, let's go. Challenging campaign holy. Yeah. Young Henrietta lost her home overnight, becoming witness to mayhem and countless deaths. Her spirit, however, remained unbroken. She found strength within and brought the survivors together. She teams up with the eccentric Brocadian inventor and sets out on a quest for a new home and a new life. So yeah, we have the first mission, a uh, world and fire. Henrietta and Frederick must bring the Orb of Tempest Fire to Frederick's laboratory. If Henrietta is defeated, you will lose the scenario. Your, your heroes are going to be limited to level 6, but Henrietta and Frederick will uh, bring Charm Mana and Color of Conjuring to the next scenario. 
Wait, so do I want archery? I mean, uh, archery is something that would last with us throughout the campaign, you know? Uh, factory has gunslingers and the things. Yeah, okay, maybe. I pay full price for Amazon Prime, but I uh, bet which will give you the shitty regional price. <laughs> I see. Anyway, very much appreciated. It's a GQ. No, it's actually not that. It's Hitsuju Koju. Yeah. I thought it was the Japanese word for humiliation, but uh, I guess not. At least not directly. Really out? Yes. Beartorch confirmed uh, a nerf to one here with the template's yellow gain. Yeah, that's completely fine, I don't mind. <laughs> hey, Kalis. Wait, it's out? No fucking way. I'm off to see the campaign for myself. Yeah. Uh, factory look OP, it is. What do you think? Um, how do you think it looks OP? Because the units look buff? Or have you looked at the stats and that looks ridiculous to you? I think it's the first. And for me, I have no idea. I'll just wait and see. Why make such a judgment? There's absolutely no reason to do so. Um, I mean, every single faction is able to do cool things. Like, you know, you would turn on, if Inferno was released today, you would grab like a single devil and do like a bunch of things with the no retail and high speed, you know? Um, and it would look ridiculous. You would demon farm and it would look ridiculous and everything, you know? So, um, you know, keep your perspectives a little bit curved. <laughs> like, you know? No reason to go all out with the, uh, with like such predictions. I mean, yeah, I'm just hoping it's gonna be fun and exciting and the theme is gonna be on point. That is what I want. Um, his first mission, yes, I'm just starting in. Okay, the Kregans invading Eofol during the night of shooting stars. The halfling, Henrietta, must find the artificer, Frederick, who might know what to do about it. Yeah, I'm actually gonna be starting with archery here. Eofol, the land of giants. Why is it called so? Deep inside, everyone is sure about us. Sure, it may sound ridiculous, but it hurts to know some call you a halfling, as if you were only half of something genuine. We've always avoided strangers. Standing next to them, it was too hard to convince yourself that it was not true. We disliked any change as it meant uh, to acknowledge we had been doing something wrong before. We believed in good old superstitions, though. And on the night when the sky above us shattered into a thousand fiery pieces, many of us were wishing on stars. Me? I thought something strange and frightening was happening, and only one man could help me understand it. It was the stranger who taught me to love the sky more than the earth. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. It seemed uh, as if that night would never end. Standing days on the bare hilltop above the village, I couldn't take my eyes off the streaks of fire as they cut across the full sky. They were too blistering to notice some of them uh, go out and, other, and others light up. Then I realized they weren't going out at all. Even after I lowered my eyelids, the day was a Oh, the day was about to break, yet I could still see, only see a mismatch of dark and light strokes. Frederick has told me never to look directly at the sun, so as not to harm my eyesight, but he never mentioned that searing light, just like that, could also pour down from the sky by night. I pressed my palm to my face and darted almost blindly down the slope towards the creek. I think I screamed, I was scared. The water and the coolness helped. My eyesight was coming back to me, but the fear didn't go away. It felt as though that blinding flame kept scorching me inside. While I could uh, still see, I noticed that the stars whose tails blazed so brightly in the night sky were not burning up in the midair. They were making it all the way to the ground, just like uh, oh, like huge smoldering rocks, uh, strangely slowly. Oh. Strangely slowly, and seemingly not far from here, just beyond those hills, then the wind brought a faint odor of smoke, not like the morning smell of stoves and houses. Over the past few years, I've gotten used to asking questions, then unlearned to do it. Oh, then unlearned to do it, and eventually mastered the thought again. When I met a man who knew far more about the world than I could imagine, I wanted to ask and ask and ask without end. I was curious about everything. Then I suddenly realized that I was asking too much nonsense. Frederick tried not to show it, but his displeasure sometimes got the best of him and he sent me away. 
There was no punishment worse than coming back from a lab full of wonders to a barn filled with broken rakes and dirty uh, burla bags. I began to think before opening my mouth, and I guess I slowly learned to ask the right questions. One such question I want to ask right now, can rocks so much like the sun fall from the sky? Um, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Experimental maintenance shop, a property of uh, the mining company, currently not hiring. Wait, it's in... The towns are gonna be like in Russian? That's not too hot. This is Laboratoria. Okay, lab uh, Laboratory. And then Henrietta is in... Okay, everything else is in English. Um... Okay. So I have Henrietta here, with my one halfling and my equestrian gloves. Even a humble halfling from the EU pole backwards is capable of a feat when an unprecedented calamity knocks at the door of the new portal devoid of thatched roofs, carrot beds, uh, or the incessant grumbling of geezers. Has changed Henrietta, and she is uh, now ready to change it herself. Quick and fire, reduce her homeland to ashes and scorch her heart, but she used it to forge herself as a steel will. Oh, use it to forge yourself a steel will. Okay, let's go. So, uh, this quest guard. The road comes down from the lab uh, laboratory and leads south uh, through the forest towards uh, Dry Rihel. There's no point in going down this road now. Must find Frederick. Alright. The sign at the gate reads, Experimental Maintenance Shop. Property of uh, the mining company, currently not hiring. Looking closely, I notice scratches on the sign. Barely visible smudges of dirt complemented them, forming symbols of a secret alphabet invented by Frederick. You'll soon come rushing here. Like if it smelled of hot apple pies. This starfall breaks all the laws of cos uh, cosmology. I've never seen such celestial phenomenon described anywhere. The speed of passing celestial bodies, the de deceleration exceeding all norms, flame streams with a vector opposite to you. The strongest light filter broke. Extremely interesting, but the situation forces me to leave the home. Names and faces from a past life has resurfaced. It could be dangerous. Be careful and don't forget our secret. I'm heading south and don't even think. Oh. Okay. Don't even think. Okay. Thoughts. No longer a thing. No longer thinking. What are you doing here, wench? Um, heard you like to look at weird things, so go over there. Like the look of a day? Uh, struts about the place, um... Struts about the place all the time. Never once, uh, looks uh, what's at her feet. Nay. Like staring at the sky way more. And now that there's a gift fell down from there, remember the hit trail over there? Now it's a hole in the ground as big as a gate where it was. And the horses are all gone. She has a sorcery brought, uh, oh, she and her sorcery brought us bad fortune. Not even old Iker remembers anything fall from up there. And he's old enough to have um, seen a living giant. If the old buzzard isn't making it up, it's black magic, that's what I'm saying. The evil once reached up from his buttons with his magics and tore off a piece of the uh, ferment. Lucky no one got hurt. Okay, and they're joining me. Cool. Seems like the offer is found judging to be for storytelling. Probably not. Wait, what? Why? You've seen so little of it and you're already judging it so harshly. Nah, not fair. Anyway, just enjoy the show, okay? I kind of did value, but I think I'm going to be doing like many long streams, like not one super long, but like many, many long throughout the week. Uh, I think that's going to be like my end. Uh... Yeah, and I think that will end up with like more hours throughout the week and more relevant hours. And that's going to be like nicer for everyone, including me. I think that's what I'll do. It fell from the sky. Can you believe it? I saw it for myself. There it is in a hole. Too scared to approach. I don't see no hole in the sky. Are you seeing things, brother? Okay, so all of these are going to be friends. What a boom. I swear, my shutters hit the wall and came to bits. So wait, tavern? No, tavern is going to be not a thing, I think. There was indeed a hole in the place the villagers had mentioned. A hole with smooth, seemingly melted edges, but somehow it wasn't too hot near it. And it didn't even look like something had been burning there. What could that mean? Some of those stars that fell in the night didn't announce their imminent arrival, but simply fell. 
wherever they needed to. I froze, frightened by my thoughts, while the uh, clamoring peasants kept waving their hands and rebuking, rebuking me as if it were somehow my doing. I turned back to them and tried to think of what to say. Suddenly, the object on their faces gave way to surprise and then to horror. Stunned, I realized that the villagers weren't looking at me anymore, but behind me, a pair of sharp, present-shaped horns appeared above the hole, and a few huge red paws, and then their owner got out of the hole with a mighty leap. Straightened up, he inhaled uh, gurgingly and let out two streams of smoke, huge in stature, with lumpy skin, the color of fresh meat, or with no skin at all. A year in the middle of the village, he looked infinitely alien. The eyes of the strange visitor were fiery spots, and the air around his figure was churning like it does above a frying pan. I felt a wave of heat and a strange, iron-like odor or taste on my tongue. And then it was as if a chemical reaction had stopped, like at Frederick's, when he let me drop some ingibitor in a flask. The monster's eyes became dim, its skin turned brown, the heat around it subdued, and I could finally get a good look at it. If one were to imagine a huge wild boar growing horns, losing its bristles, standing up on two legs like a man, getting humps on its back and chest, that would still be a very, uh, that would still be a very rough and flattering description of the creature I saw. Its ugliness was striking. The creature wiggled, its huge head around and looked at the crowd, its snail-like mouth opened, and a disgustingly long tongue fell out. With a loud clang, the monster took its first step onto land of Eiffel. Funny. I thought as if some good farrier had already shoehorned him. Okay. And this is the creature. Hello! Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. The horned one lies on the ground, hit between the eyes a few times with heavy slingshot bullets. Uh, his head is cracked, one horn broken off. What seemed unthinkable yesterday is now sprinkling our land with his stinking blood. A beast, it would seem. But no, not a beast. His eyes were too intelligent until they faded. Not an elemental spirit, not a human, not a magic creature. And silence all around, nothing more to argue about. We should inform everyone about this uh, devilry at once. How many of them are roaming the forest now, trampling our mushrooms? We must prepare an ambush, I heard, from the halfling flocking around the vanquished creature. Suddenly the clatter died down, and I felt a dozen intense stares. Henrietta, you know all paths around here. You're the only one who knows where all the villages are. What an ordeal it is for them to go beyond the outskirts of their home village. All their lives they've been afraid of strangers, and here was their fear embodying. Even dead, it made them sweat. But now they stood with their chins high and spat on the brown corpse. If there's more than one of them out there... Why, lads? Where there's one, there's gonna be others, right? We'd better get some heavy stones and go together. Custom, an elderly carter who was uh, lamenting the horses, threw his hat on the ground. I would have made these some um, signed hogs pay for my ponies. Show the way, lass. Can't we cut through the woods uh, to the tall bridges? Okay, let's go. Let's see how to follow the plot of Twerpen. Yeah, of course I will. Like, bruh. There's not even any. And yeah, this is the crater where the demon fell. Okay, so, uh. Ooh, several demons. What the hell? Wait, can, will we be fine? I guess we'll be probably fine. Uh, yeah. To find Frederick, I... Oh, to find Frederick, I had to find Frederick. No arguments there. Nothing could be more important now. Not because of my... Uh, not because of the telescope. Well, everything that could fall from the sky had already done it. It was just my heart telling me that it'd be better to be by his side now. Any knowledge he had, even the very lore that made him so feared by my fellow villagers could be useful today. Uh, for as long as I could remember, I'd always done, I had always been alone and lived in a barn with Grandma Hai. He was not my own grandfather, that I knew somehow, but he still fed me, gave me clothing, and let me sleep by his stove in his house in winter. 
But the rest of the time, I prefer to be on my own. Prodrick came into my life when I was... Hmm... Well, I don't know how old I am now. Doesn't matter. That was the first time I ventured into the hills beyond, oh, behind her grove and saw a big new house and, and next to it, one disturbingly tall man and two smaller ones, like halflings but different, grey-skinned. Then I learned that those little people were called gremlins and that, that, they, and that they were not really human, but Frederick refused to answer my further questions and I never saw gremlins again. And then, perhaps out of fear of the unknown, I froze and let myself uh, be caught. I, uh, though I could have hidden in the forest from anyone, Frederick realized that I wasn't the kind of person that, cha oh, that chased uh, him off uh, to this neck of the woods, and he let me come see him sometimes. I guess he needed uh, some live ears to listen to his crazy hypothesis, and he didn't care that I was a silly little girl who couldn't even count her fingers. I stayed in the lab for weeks on end, for no one missed me in the village anyway. My thin hands were often just what Frederick needed. Sometimes he asked me to crawl inside the sophisticated machine to find a burst hole holes or check the wear on a gear. Such joy it gave me when I was able to help and the assembled mechanism began to hiss and spin, even though I hadn't the faintest idea of what was happening. He, however, always knew what was going to happen and why it should work. Uh, yeah. We can get the ore, and, uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna be fighting the demon. Uh, not really anywhere else to go. Uh, how do we do this? Let's try and do it like this. I'm gonna be, like, outspeeding them. Yeah, okay. The creatures look similar to the, uh, to the one in the pit. They had no metal ornaments on their paws, and only one horn, thick and short. They exchanged uh, jerky uh, guttural noises as if they were balking at each other, but I could see they understood each other much better than dogs. As soon as the pack spotted us, however, the quarreling stopped. With their hooves digging up the ground, the creatures rushed into the fight. Okay, AI loses. That's not great. Okay, so far so good. Oh, very nice. <clears throat> oh, Raj the same. Oh, it can be some Rajas. Wait, maybe I want to do this though. Oh, can't believe it! Finally some familiar faces! We went to scoop up uh, saltpeter water in the morning to fertilize the gardens, and there were those horned ones. We barely got away. Let's join up. Let's. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I probably will just... Oh, armor? Mm, probably not. Wait, I feel like a hero will come out of here and kill me. Probably. Ooh, boots of speed. I really want that. Uh, to the south, dry right hill. To the east, tall uh, we sellers. To the west, tall ridges. I remember dry right hill. Is that where Frederick is? Mm, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna be going over here right now. Get the hood. The hood? Yes. Well, I mean, it is what it is if I die, you know? I need to move. Whoops. Wait, let's do that again. You missed some more. Let's give some dialogue. Wait, I did? Where did I? How did I? Can I go anywhere that they wouldn't reach? I can make a one stack bank it instead, I guess. Nah, bro. The quest house, the left one. 
Listen, I'm just gonna be playing natural. I'm not gonna be catching everything necessarily. Mm. We have like plus or morale. Can I morale? Fine. Ah, uh, let's try it. A devil, damn. Oh, uh, Quasar. Well, yeah, here, but... Meh. Anyway, no spoilers, guys. Okay. Many who had not believed in the danger opened their eyes now, but there were also many who shrugged off the trouble. Even though it was knocking at their door, the difference? The former had already seen what the celestial quest did to living beings, while the latter had yet to. It was too late for them to get wiser. Though, um, I could see from the hills how the creatures uh, were flooding the farms we had left behind. For the first time in the decade past uh, since the last bad harvest, something bigger than a new turnip dish recipe had to happen in the halflings' lives. And I never imagined it carried this much sorrow. Frederick, where are you? Okay. Dude, a loss of Arc Devils? That's quite a bit of army. Mm, expert archery? Or offense? Uh, I would like a school of magic or something. Tic Tacs. I think Tic Tacs are pretty good here as well. Yeah, I'll take that. Am I skipping the quest? Wait, I'm gonna save and quest. The family in the sticks, uh, oh, this family lives in the sticks and remains uh, of uh, impenetrably calm. Henrietta even thinks that the solitude and uh, monotony in their lives have made them quite dim. When they hear the latest news, they don't even bat the eye, oh, bat an eye. The great here, the father laments the lack of manpower, but agrees to let some of his laborers go with you, yet only for a hefty payment. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Wait, no, this is also not what I want to do. Uh, world on fire. Wait, what did I do? Load. Campaign. World on fire. Quest. Okay, there we go. There's like some resources over here, but am I going for that? I'm not sure. I think it's a restart. If I have to restart, I'll restart, but uh, you know, we'll see. These things are already here too. Did they really come uh, on the rocks from the sky? And and where are the blacksmiths who forged the, their horseshoes? Are they coming next? The monsters split into oh, split into groups as if planning uh, the pins of me and my companions. They were certainly more intelligent than animals, and there were getting more and more numerous. Sure, we had our own slings ready, enough stones for all of them, but I wish we had something stronger. Yeah, I think this tactics is gonna be amazing. I think this kiting mission is going pretty well for me. Oh, very nice. And let's just use this Galilee epic. No one seemed to heed me in this house. The old one was laying, uh, was laying the table, and the children were playing uh, by the har hearth. Did that Frederick put you up to this kind of follies? Don't you trust that devil? What's uh, he? Oh, what's he's doing at the graveyard? Cast spells on dug up graves. You'll be lost with him, just like your good for nothing mother. Tut, tut. Hey, yeah, sit down and have a meal with us. Can't let a uh, guest go hungry now, can I? There's not much, just steamed turnips, but still a dinner. Just don't think of sweet-talking us into your silliness. We're not going anywhere. We've got... Oh, we've got a lot to do. No reason to. I realize words were useless, but I didn't refuse a snack. The old woman had mentioned something about my mother, but I didn't remember her. And no one had ever told me a word about her. I tried to get uh, 
gather to talk over the meal, but Haridan pretended to be deaf. Yeah, I'll just kill you. Take bye. Yeah, how dare you talk like that about my mom? Mm-hmm. There we go. And yeah, happy new year's everyone coming in. The other family, the honorable, uh the honorable Odo Two Owns heard me out, but didn't bat an eye. Your adventurousness do not uh, will not do you any good, Henrietta. I think you're making it all up, but you know me, Odo Grin. Can't say no to a young lass. I'd have some of my lads go with you, but since you say there are such hordes around, it wouldn't hurt us to protect ourselves, would it? Wouldn't it? Tell you what, get the elder of Dry Rykill to lend us dependent of this passion, and we can stay protected and spare those men. Okay, wait, I'm gonna be saving for the quest again. And then uh, I'll just go and check this. Oh, hello. Are you strong? Yeah, you're kind of strong. Uh, I don't think I'm checking that quest. Uh huh. Wait, a uh, load campaign quest. Okay, then uh, I'm going down and running. Oh lord, we're running! Uh, okay. Hey, Dana, fishy to stop, thank you! Um, okay. Okay, they're not that tough right now. Damn, they're slaughtering everyone. Damn. The nightmare came in the light of day. It was like uh, if you wanted to wake up, you just couldn't because you were <clears throat> because you were already awake, a wide awake and incredulous. Things that felt so important just a few days ago seemed to just be gone, shrouded by fog. In the course of those days, the imagined danger grew into a very real terror. Several villagers in the north were gone, as if they had never existed. The news was brought by the lucky survivors, the stench of fires and sulfur was now everywhere and any stirring in the bushes caused uh, consternation. At dawn, we ran to some refugees, the halflings, one I recognized as the elder of the village, half a day's journey away, were looking around in a daze, unsure what to do. Uncle Cat, how did you make it here? I called out to him. Don't tell me you ran here through the woods all night straight from your farm. Or did you? Well, someone had to start uh, ramming down your door. You'll get not only out of bed, but out of your uh, pants too. So yeah, we ran off. We need to gather people. That's what I think. Which is you off? Goblins? Like five years ago? Um, I already knew the answer, but somehow I hold Ket would say something else. Devils. Some, uh, with some big old horns. I don't really know what they were. The elder said the uh, sheepish lame. They killed my dog at once. He whined so horribly. Then they kicked in the door, and I jumped out the window. Not time to get dressed, that was. They stood in a ring around the farm. I don't even remember how I got past them. I met someone else in the forest later, but I'm afraid that's all of us. And we'll never see the others. Damn. Oh, uh, okay. That's good, something. Hey! My son. What, uh, quite a few bits. Thank you. All the best for the New Year's. Do you, do you? Hey, Gasha. Um, uh, I think the Gambit's on a paint. Wait, what? This factory out. Let's do the factory god. Upon will crush us. I don't think this... Oh, wait. Uh, Ryan. This is gonna be a win. I won against Sword of Lost yesterday. Yeah, okay. Nice. Hey, meatball. Just turbo through in. Well, I mean, listen, I'll just, I'll just stick to my own devices, okay? I will be fine. Don't need no vaccinating. I'll be okay. And I'll be enjoying the story and the thematics and everything along the way. I'm not looking to turbo through it. I'm looking to have a nice playthrough, okay? So keep your bad exceeding and whatever you experience to yourself. And, uh, yeah, look, if you want, let's experience it together again. Okay? So there you go. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, uh, how much am I collecting here? I'm already almost level 6, so I don't really need a lot of XP. Yeah, this will get me to the next level. 
Advanced Log is gonna be possibly helpful. Frederick's message spoke of <clears throat> names and faces from the past, and he was going south. I assumed that was, um... Uh, I'm assumed that he was going to meet some old acquaintances, and if so, they could only be meeting here, in Dry Rigel, a place where outsiders came to trade and were less uh, shunned than in the other villages in the valley. A mile away from the village, it was clear already that it was gone. Those who came here not only hungered for killing, but also for raising. Or maybe it was some twisted alien approach to creation. One of those creatures are just as happy to contemplate mounds of burned logs as a halfling is to behold a new lovingly painted barn. And the earth scorched to a molten crust as it is as dear to them as his favorite hand-plowed gardens with huge carrots are to Grandpa Hai. And if they caught those who live here by surprise, what did they do to them? Um, so I think I'll do like this. Um, okay. Yeah, there is busted. Yeah, there is amazing, Jesus. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dad, can you make a new video to your factory? Ranking units, uh, etc. Oh, yeah, definitely I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be doing, like, a video overview of, like, the entire factory. When I get to know it, like, well enough, I'm gonna be... Yeah, like, all of that is definitely happening. Uh-huh. I'm going to make your review. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, today I'm gonna be probably playing, like, 10 hours of factory or something. 10 to 12. And, uh, then I'll be making videos as well. On a way, I tried to entertain myself in some way, keep from succumbing to horror and the uh, dis despondency. I painted in my mind a picture of a stern smith shooing the screaming horned creatures. The reality turned out to be far beyond anything I could have imagined. There, in what had once been the village square of Dry Rye Hill, I saw him. The word devil came to mind, for according to the drunken monk who... Uh, whose ranting I had once listened to in the local tavern, there was nothing more horrible than the devil, either in this world or the other. The top of the two light creature's head, crowned with the twisted horns, was visible even over the roofs. Each clawed foot seemed capable of easily covering and crushing a halfling, and a scythe that could surely cut down a young grove glistening in its hands. That was when I realized the Horned Ones have no farers. The devil just wags his fingers at them and they rush uh, to shoo each other, or even themselves, fighting over hammers and nails. Apparently, what I had seen disturbed my mind. I tried to stay on the edge of madness while it threw more and more absurd visions at me. My companions told me later that I was laughing and shouting, Get some longer, sharper nails, as he dragged me into bushes away from the road. There, there, lassie, Costa muttered, trying to call me. Sure, that's a big beastie, yeah, and a foul one, but it'll hit square in the eye with a firecracker. Oh, but, and then we'll see who's got a the reddest nose in the village. And to your pouches, lads, we'll teach these zealots how to celebrate the new year our way. Oh my god, you had to celebrate new year with pouches and devil's eyes. Let's go! Hey, Muna. Yeah, not so tough now, are you, devil? Boom. After the battle against the devil, we search every corner of Dry Rye Hill. I fear that Frederick burned and mangled body was about to emerge from the rubble. However, we found no corpses in the village, but we saw many tracks, as if the owners of the big hoos were dragging something behind them. The tracks led to the eastern outskirts of the village and the nearby forest had been burned to the ground. Suddenly, uh, swerving between the black, ugly dead trees, a small group of halflings came running straight to us. There, there, they shrieked, running at a, st at a steady gala. I managed to catch a ginger boy with a crazy look in his eyes, and my companions grabbed the others. The redhead caught his breath and blurted out. They took our folk, now they're executing them, and not to death, even worse. Help, good people. Don't let the wicked do such a thing. There is fate worse than death, worse than anything in the world. He burst into tears. Oh my god, you're getting demon farmed. Ha! <laughs> Color of Conjuring. I should pick this up. 
Charmer mana and color of conjuring for the next scenario. Yeah, I want that. Ooh, but that's like the hero that I need. Wait, what's the win condition? Let's bring back the Orbit Temples of Fire to Frederick's laboratory. Oh, this is the laboratory. Seeks Frederick. Okay, so Frederick will need to go like here. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. Oh, uh, sure. The wind blew. A pa a pall stinking smoke in our direction. With it, a great, desperate, almost inhuman shriek came to us. And then we heard an eerie, rumbling voice which seeming which seemed coming from beneath the, the ground. We rushed into the smoke, and after a hundred paces, we saw a picture that made our eyes water. In the middle of one of once In the middle of once was a meadow, now just a circle of scorched earth, there was something like a huge hearth with a flat stone cauldron, its walls red hot, and around it, a lake of thick fire, slurry was glowing and gurgling. Knee deep in it, as if ignorant of the heat, tall, mighty creatures with bright red skin were standing, and a few more giants of the same kind were driving a few stumbled halflings to the cauldron with long whips. Farther away, near the burnt trees, the horned beasts already familiar to us were standing guard over a large crowd of villagers. The halflings were brought to the cauldron, and among them I recognized Maltman, the innkeeper from Dry Rye Hill. Before I knew it, the red giant had swung his whip in a fiery line, and three unfortunates all uh, fell dead. The crowd began shrieking, while the monsters seemed to be doing their usual, enjoyable work, tossing courses to each other, easily tearing them from limb to limb, putting them into the cauldron. One of the creatures looked inside then, appar apparently satisfied, made a sign to the others. The giants started oh stared at the cauldron gestured with their hands some roared and their eyes glowed then the voice we had heard from afar sounded again as if the hell itself had spoken the flesh of the executed instantly burst into flames turned into a dis disgusting mash boiled up into a huge cap of uh, brown foam fell, and in the midst of the cauldron, the ugly figure of a one-horned monster appeared. Its body was billowing smoke, and the drying sludge dripped down its uh, body with a hiss. The ginger boy was right. The face, fate worse than death exists now. Okay. Well, the demons are cooking, and oh my god, it's actually cooking. The gag cell. I think I should have made these stacks here for this. It's gonna be a little bit hard with a single stack. Not too hard though. Are they gonna demon farm themselves in front of me? This would be like a little bit not to, well, I mean, maybe. I mean making use of the dead. Actually I will load and go to Load campaign. Here. Battle. Yeah. I just wanna make two stacks. Decent enough. Oh, Altar of Sacrifice, that's interesting. Okay, so we saved them all. And I have just the right amount of moves to free, uh... Frederick, presumably. Um, alright. Hey, Lichav, I'm from YouTube Gang. Hey! Yo, yo, Bell. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Lucy, now it's a factor all day long. Yeah, naturally. You're alive! Yes, I'm alive, and I'd very much like to know where Brocadian Demologist I've pissed off. <laughs> Which Brocadian Demologist I've pissed off? I've never ever uh, even crossed paths with any. What a mistake. 
I didn't even know what Frederick was talking about, but I was so happy to see him alive. I didn't even try to ask him anything. He, as usual, kept feeding me a mountain of thoughts and assumptions. As if I'd showed up at his lab in the morning, he couldn't wait to have my ear to share what he had the uh, cooking in his head. Some time ago, I received a letter personally from, signed by Kazandar. I think I told you about him. The freest mind in Ricotta, for which he will surely pay sooner or later. I had not heard of him since I left those lands, but a few years ago, a messenger from him found me, and we entered into correspondence. It seemed as though our connection has now been discovered. The signature in his last message looked, um, forged to me. I decided that, it, uh, that if I had been found, indeed, I should act first. The letter proposed a meeting. Kazandar was supposedly going to send me a crucial component for a certain experiment, but there were demons waiting for me in Dry Rykill. Those are creatures. Oh, those are creatures from another pl plane of existence. You just saw them. Somebody summoned them, but neglected control, so they captured me, killing half the village. Meanwhile, Frederick, those things—they weren't summoned, or at least not by wizards, certainly. Not by wizards? What makes you say that? Those were some, uh, archetypal demons. I'd seen stuffed ones in the Academy Museum. Shooting stars. And they came out of the rocks that fell from the sky that night. Frederick's face fell. He began arguing. But I just took him to the place where the creatures were doing the ritual. And I showed them the huge crater at the village. At the village edge. The stone that had fallen there was so big that a devil could fit inside, maybe even a few. The rock is split open and the cracks reveal something strange and unnatural. Either a tangle of angular pipes or... Well, I'll be. If only all alchemists, uh, if only alchemists, uh, Windman and Staten would have seen that. I don't even want to think about. I mean, I suspected it was not a real meteor shower. Wait, so it was a coincidence? Cassander's message, uh, messenger was certainly waiting for me, and you're telling me those things have already taken over half the valley? Henrietta, we need to get back to my lab now. You go straight there right now, and I'll... I didn't tell you this, but Cassander had once uh, talked uh, me into joining an interesting project, and I'd set up another uh, research site in the mountains to the east. Now I need to get there, and you... I'm going straight north. You weren't, uh, you weren't held here alone. Another prisoner said there's a detachment of ruffian soldiers came nearby. Apparently someone escaped the valley and was able to call them for help. Refugees are flocking to them now. Frederick, listen, I know you don't much like halflings. Sure, I myself, like a stranger in my, um, feel like a stranger in my own land sometimes, but I see what the monsters do. We have to do something, or they'll kill everyone and turn them into uh, their filthy flesh if we don't try to save someone. Well, that'll kill me. Okay. Yeah, well, there might not be enough hands. In fact, that would be most helpful, yes. Uh -huh, that's right, we can't, just, uh, stay in we can't just stay aside. Now listen, take everyone we can to my lab. 300, maybe 500, if I can get those old Gavin underpants to fly to you. Someone's gotta help me settle down when our flight ends. Flight? Are we gonna fly like birds? Not exactly. With its only chance that the devils continue to destroy everything in their path with such ab ab abandon. Trust me, as you always have, and you'll see it for yourself. That's it then. I'm going to the mountains. Um, okay. So, we have Frederick here, he's a level 3 artificer, he has a spell book with Haste, Cure, and Disrupting Ray. His specialty is Automatons. Uh, that's pretty cool. Wisdom, Air Magic, Water, and Intelligence, pretty good hero. Has a few Leprechauns and quite a few Halflings, okay. So... Wait, what are we doing? How are we splitting the army? Who's going where? Uh, where's the Eropian outpost? And this thing requires Frederick, so Frederick is going north. And then I'll get this hero to maybe be here? Gotham Gloves Steam, yeah. 
A palisade was an unusual site for these places, yet someone had cared enough to build it. It gave me some hope, even a faint. The sentries were steady and waved cheerfully, inviting me to the camp. My companions fell to the ground right as we stepped aside the walls. Several days with barely any food or proper rest had taken their toll on them. They were unaccustomed to such deprivation of their fleshy, well-fed bodies. I went straight to talk to the commander. He was standing in the center of the camp, giving the instructions and waiting to talk to the new arrivals. Mm -hmm. By the way, increase the damage dealt by explosion of automatons and sentinel automatons by 5% for every level. Wait, this is a very cool specialty now that I think about it. Right? Wait, so level 20 Frederick is gonna make the explosions deal twice the damage. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's very, very cool. Uh-huh. Wait, factory out? Yes. Everyone in the Opal had heard of Tavin, but not everyone spoke of him favorably. The Havlink who left his own um, village in his own free will to join a Rothian border guards was only a role model they wanted for their children. His military service had left musical marks on the hard face of the commander. His faded eyes were deeply sunken, his nose was broken, and his thin cheek twitched uh, distressingly every now and then. What's going on north? Tamin asked, wasting no time in greetings. I have death on my heels, we've broken away, but the villagers... Good as dead, the commander snapped. The forest here are already crawling with creatures, and any day now they will be under every bush. In the south and west, everyone who didn't escape has already been turned into meat. I led the advance party of the guards, followed by the rest of my men, under Captain Zarfax's command. A half day's march behind us. Followed? Were they attacked by the horned beasts on their way? No, they, j they came just fine. There's only one way out of here, and that's where they're standing now. Just them. I served Zarfax for 15 years, and today, when I went to Ren... Ren does a... I would never know... Rendezvous? When I went to Rendezvous with his unit, he ordered his men to cut out my liver. We barely got away and hid behind those flimsy walls. Now we're figuring out how to make ourselves tasty. So the devils don't get bored eating us. Davin. We need to get through. There's still hope of rescuing someone, but we need to get the North Road. Your commander is a traitor, but together we can... Tavin grabbed me by the collar with a snarl and yanked me into the air like a sack of rags. His gaze was frightening. Fool! Stupid girl. Zarfax did not betray. The devils bewitched him. You hear that? You're going to take your dots with the firecrackers, and we're going to beat this foolishness out of the old man. And then you're going to get whatever you can. And... Go do that, and go do what you're gonna do. I don't want to know anything about it, so I won't tell anything when they catch me and roast me over a slow fire like, um, blue middle sausage. Okay. Oh, that's like quite a few of them, actually. That's kind of cool. Oh, uh, so this is Zarpax. Oh, he's cooking. Oh, the Zarpax is gonna be cooking, huh? So wait, is, the, is Freddy gonna be fine with this army? Uh, I would much rather have uh, her fight. Then again, if he does need the XP. Okay, I think I'll wait here for like a moment. Uh huh. It means to group up. I know what it means, I just don't know how. Oh my. Zydar is here too. Damn. Um, alright. Anyway, Henrietta can go up. Do I let Frederick take the fight? I think I will, actually. But there's no reason not to have, like, all the army that I can on me. And I do want the XP. The rag cohort lined up for battle. Commands were heard, and no longer in Arabian, some alien tongue, crude and animalistic, shields and the uh, shirkles over their armor were thickly stained with blood. They didn't even attempt to clean them. How could they dare to betray, to submit to this vile force? What had broken the will of these experienced soldiers? Was it the fear of imminent death, or of being turned into alien flesh? 
It doesn't matter now. There's only one way north. Mm, this guy has tactic steam. Well, one thing that I'll definitely need is haste. That's very good. Uh, what do I do? Yeah, just get at it, I guess. These guys can cast? Oh, it's the train, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can actually use these guys to kite pretty well. Because they will be the priority target here. This guy should attack this. Yes, that's great. And now I can kill all of these guys. Can't really do anything about being caught here multiple times. Really. It's kind of annoying, but, you know, what can you do? Maybe I'll get rid of this guy at the very least. That one was getting pretty annoying. Yeah, the black one I can kite for some. So maybe this guy too. Uh... Yeah, sure, let's get rid of this uh, incoming damage. Uh, yeah. I'd say it's decent. The closed gates of the Ravenopoles can be seen ahead. After the defeat of um, the Possessed and the Fi... Oh. After the defeat of the Possessed and the fight of Zophrax himself, the Apples was deserted. Do you wish to pass? Yes, I do. Wait, but now I have to fight side Eye, bro. I should probably let Henrietta do this one. She's way stronger. I love discovering new things, but I hate surprises. That's the beauty of the process. Developing as a theory and then practicing it to achieve exactly what you expect. The theory, of course, can be as bold as you like. The unusual starfall could not uh, help but attract my attention. Even though I was thinking about the other things that night, I'm not ashamed to admit the unraveling of this phenomenon was the most unpleasant surprise of my life. All of us, the scientists of Enroth, even those who do not yet suspect what has happened, were confronted with a fact. Rocks can fall from the sky, and not just fall, but carry guests that no one would willingly invite to their home. Now I think, what if they are what if they are not stones at all, but something akin to our airships? Only more complex and perfect, or maybe only fragments of such ship that uh, has crashed. Is it possible that up there, so high that we can't see it, even with a telescope, city-sized hulks, um, Someone crafted are flying somewhere on their business, carrying whole nations, exchanging signals, and sometimes volleys of monstrous guns. And where did he dock? For their harbor surely cannot be on our own planet, Cannon. I called myself thinking, what I would like most of all now is to find a common language with one of the aliens, listen to their stories about how their native place, to ask a thousand questions. For some reason, they didn't show me straight into the cauldron when they made their warriors from the dead flesh. Maybe they saw in me someone with whom they could uh, reach an understanding and agree on something. Maybe I should have... As I thought about it, I, no I didn't notice we'd reached my old lab. <clears throat> Hearing Henrietta's command, Ready right the shells! I looked up to see a large group of aliens blocking our way. This time, they were lined with a sort of battle formation, and there was a clear leader, a lean, scarlet-skinned, horned, one clad in the black armor, as if they covered a thick layer of uh, seat. He stepped forward and looked me straight in the eye and scraped a claw across his throat, licking his thin lips. Damn. Amy Kick with a raid. Thank you, thank you, welcome. I'm playing for the new, uh, factory campaign here, right now. Hope you enjoy your stay. Yeah, I might have lost too much armor here in the last fight, though. And I might not be able to do this one as well. Oh, I, I also didn't pick, the, pick up the color of Conjuring. That's pretty bad. Maybe I'll want to redo this a little bit. But only a little bit. Of course, I'm going to need to retreat the decks again. Maybe you should never reach chat. Chat is, like, <coughs> pretty weird right now, so I'm just chilling on it. I'll be gone. Welcome everyone coming in. Very nice. Wow, you only beat one Gog here in this fight. 
Dude, I'm gonna get cooked by a fireball, aren't I? Well, who would have thought? Yeah, I can't do this right now the way that I am. I will need the Henrietta to do the fights, and uh, yeah, okay, we need to go back to World of Fire. By the way, this campaign is like said to be very difficult, and I'm playing it on the impossible difficulty. Now, the first mission is probably gonna be like not too hard, but uh, yeah, still probably pretty difficult. So yeah, Fred is kind of waiting. Uh, I have Henrietta here. So I'm gonna be doing this. Am I? Mm. Yeah, I think I am. I think I am. Hey, Lisa, how far are we in the campaign? I'm um, still on the first mission, and the demons are falling from the sky and invading the halflings' homes. Uh, we have our uh, hero Henrietta, who's just a young lass that's not very welcome in her own home, and now she has to fight demons. And then we have uh, the artificer, uh, Frederick, who seems like a pretty smart dude. And we just saved them. And now we're trying to get to Frederick's laboratory. And that is the current status. I'd love to take the fight on this turn, but I'm not really sure if I am going to be able to do so. Anyway, uh, Henrietta's gonna be doing like a far better job of dealing with this fight than anyone else could. So, yeah. Um, I can also do the fight on this turn. Uh, yeah. Wow, the auto is really good. I'm actually just gonna take him. Yeah. Jesus. Dude, Henrietta is just so much better. Uh, Frederick will need to be here. But I really love Frederick to get all of this experience, still. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that's gonna be available at all. Ooh, there's a guy here now. Jesus. Okay, so I can't be too slow. <clears throat> the demons are over running us. Do you see the steel? Huh? Wait. I'd often been berated and branded an uh, an adventure seeker. And what are advent and what are adventures? Stories of glorious heroes, heroes and dragon slayers uh, sung in taverns by traveling bards. Sure, I like to listen to them, but they never mention the fatigue, the bloody feet, the stench of dead bodies, or the screams of people eaten alive that echoed through the forest all night. The demons were on the hunt. Villages were not enough for them. Those who took shelter in the forest were now in danger too. Frederick and I spent uh, the night sitting by the fire, looking in the flames, regurgitating the same, the same slow meaningless remarks. We were so exhausted we couldn't even bring ourselves to sleep. If this was adventure, then I can assure you I never wanted adventure. By morning, we were in agreement. Nothing to do for us here. We must leave the valley immediately. As the sun was gathering high, the, new, the numbness we had fallen into the previous night had finally passed. At least Frederick spoke as quickly and vigorously as before, and his eyes were was keenly aware of the smallest details in the chaos. Henrietta, I want to thank you again. Perfect timing to get me out. It seems our aliens are more about the monology than the uh, entire Brocadian Academy. They're already summoning some pretty powerful creatures uh, from the elemental plane of fire, and I don't see them needing months of rituals, rare regions, or the favorable position of celestial bodies to do it. If we delay any longer, I wouldn't love to see Eofall being turned into a nice warm place like the one where those things are coming from. Though the portals uh, and the gates, you know, some of them prefer to live in active volcanoes, and Eopal is full of fire-breathing mountains that once became dormant, but can be brought back to life. Okay. Uh, sure, let's go. That sure doesn't have the makings of, um... Uh, varsity narrator. I mean, yeah, I don't pretend I am. I'm just enjoying the campaign, okay? Like, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna be needing to do this. Oh, this is a quest gate? Wait, this is a quest gate? Wait, what the hell are quest gates? What? I didn't- what? Wait, I need to check. What the hell did I miss? Uh, I didn't know this. Wait, so Frederick was supposed to go here. 
Shit. Looks a lot like a challenge map, to be honest. Yeah, that is awesome. Wait, I need to go back. Okay, sorry, this is the last time. Wait, then we are here. Yeah, I think I need to go back a little bit more, but this time I can do like really, really fast though. Um, so brought whoa all the way here though. Eh. It's fine. Oh boy, oh boy, let's have a fat factory. Yeah. Well, they said he was supposed to go east, and he had to north Lamont. Yeah, I kind of glossed over that part. Yikes. Yeah, I'll just do the, all of this real quick. Then, what about the army uh, composition, though? Hmm, I guess I'll just let Predator go with his own army. And that's it. Yeah, this one I think I wanted to have half. Uh, last time I did it, then it should be pretty easy. Not understanding the lore. I do, I do. You realize? Yeah, it's not a problem. It's just like a minute detour. Don't worry about it. No, I can't believe it brew. We here. Huh? Wait, I'm gonna be moving this guy up. Hmm, a cleaner split would have been helpful here. Actually, no, not really. Oh, oops. Okay, bye. Then, do I have the time for the color of conjuring? I believe we probably do. Uh huh. If those aren't uh, slob buckets. Oh, if those aren't slob buckets again. But now, the first move is mine. Ha! Let's see what you're worth when my hands aren't tied. gonna suck actually oh my and how the hell do I did I not kill this yet it's pretty wild can I bless or something let's do that again I hope I will not need any more mana for anything else. Because, uh, I'm actually still kind of dying. Charm mana, yeah, that's really good. The church house would be amazing too, but... Hmm. There's kind of literally no way. I think this is fine, right? Spotting for a second. I dug in into my memory. No, there shouldn't be anything in the cemetery that uh, would be important right now, except for a couple of things that might come in handy for experiments someday. But I like, but I changed my field of scientific uh, interest quite uh, some time ago. Not that anyone cares. Just once, can you? No, it's true what they say. Only the dead don't care about reputation. <laughs> oh. 
Slavlings are good now. Well, they always were. It's just that they were not, like, commonly available a lot. That's all. Wow, I'm dealing zero damage, actually. But how am I dealing so little damage? It's insane. I'm doing so little damage, it's unbelievable. Can you go can you come over here? Line ball, that's pretty cool. Oh, probably friends, right? Oh, and I will bring them over so Henrietta can actually fight Frederick. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I think I know what to do then now. Oh, uh, yeah, that's very cool. I like that. Uh, by this point, I'm, uh, the only thing that I'm unsure of is whether this is going to be fast enough. Because uh, I really want the color of Conjuring, you know? I don't really need anything. Well, maybe. I'll take one gold pile. The legacy of time, uh, one, oh, the legacy of the time of wonders is truly priceless. Rulers and warriors yearn to find armor and weapons dating back to those times, but they are not <clears throat> what matters to someone who wants to change the whole world in time. I spent a long time gathering tiny scraps of ancient uh, secrets to build something of my own from them, and I've gotten somewhere. My machines are still very vulnerable. Their, purp their propulsion systems are unstable and inefficient, but they are reasonably automatons, autonomous, and are capable of making simple decisions on their own. And that's something. Wouldn't you agree? The, auto uh, the auto automatons and assembly line awaits. Damn, look at that. 16 automatons. That's awesome. And then I have this thing to go for. Uh, yeah, let's try it. <clears throat> the maid disappears suddenly, as if a veil of disability has fallen. Of course, I could even... I could feel their presence. These are powerful mages. Their energy cannot be hidden. Very good. Even strong ones could have taken care of that. A renegade Frederick. Their leader's uh, voice came from all directions at once, as if from the sky, no echo, no whisper of leaves or, uh, or wind, just impassive speech pouring straight into my ears. The console of Ricotta knows of your dark deeds, your forbidding practice of necromancy, your stealing of the sky ship, your disgraceful flight from Ricotta, and your ties to the renegade, Kazandar. However, you have done no harm to the living, and so you deserve a fair trial and a fair sentence. We will guarantee that your punishment does not include death. Lay down your weapons. Release the mana from your body and approach us. You know it full well. By following this path you have fallen into sin. The dark books may give you knowledge, but it is always laced with poison of pain and death. A researcher must not spread it. You still consider you, if you, you still consider yourself a seeker, don't you? Redeem yourself, Frederick, and live once as an honest man. Seeker, eh? Okay. Frederick is a seeker, eh? Um, hell yeah. Check the map on NPC the one after you complete the quest. Mm, eh. God, listen. It's you, isn't it? Still working as a heavy club in the grip of Gavin's uh, morality police. Any... You had so much potential back in the day. Renegade Frederick is even flattering to hear. But Renegade Kazandar? Isn't that too big for your bro britches? Even your superiors haven't dared to decide anything regarding them yet. I would have known it otherwise. There's too much of his uh, merit. Too many of, too many other respected wizards in the academy who won't let you dumb thugs take down the best mind of Ricotta based on ridiculous speculations. And Magnus himself hasn't spoken yet. Forbidden practices? How do you, do you realize how ridic ridiculous that sounds? Tell me, former colleague, is there really a big difference between Nagas and Medusas? Oh yes, the Medusas are a result of a twisted process that causes the survivors, the surviving objects, to rage and feel anguish. 
How could I forget? And gremlins differ from troglodytes only in the fact that their slavery is signed by magical contract and seals. Am I not confused? Everyone needs servants, and putting the souls of fallen warriors into statues to get sapient titans is, of course, fair of the dead and purely academic, uh, academically impeccable. Well, 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 why blushing so much? They started saying the spells. We won't ever get each other, listen. Your mind is not free. Damn. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. Thomaton. Uh, let's activate the, det the, the detonation, especially this one. Oh yeah, I didn't do that one. Wait, is that the reason why they're focusing that one, actually? I wonder. Necklace of Dragon Thief. Wait, but I lost like all my army. That's probably not good. Can I do that better? Wasn't the auto even better? Yeah, the auto is better. How the hell did I do worse? Yo, how the hell do I do worse? Auto lost all spiders. No, it survived with six spiders. Uh, yeah. Oh! Yo, that was cool. Oh my god, it did so much damage. Automat uh, the Exploded Automaton does 87 damage. A one second deal 87 damage? Yo! Yo, that's cool. Okay, that's quite a bit better. Yeah, let's go. I got three orbs of fire out of the box with utmost care. These lightweight, smokeless heat sources would make the water in the engine boilers bubble, and the quality of the steam produ uh, <clears throat> produced dust would make my machinery work just right. For years, Sam had been urging me to move to her place and take my designs with me. It would be quieter, and all the raw materials would be really readily available, she insisted. Why did I ever put this off? According to the rough calculations I'd used to keep myself busy on the road, the orbs' charge should have been enough for the long trip to, Jadami, to Jadami. Three would surely do it for me alone, but now I had to get every ship I had up in the air at once. Had I, ju oh, had I just a little more time to prepare, I could get the heat medium condenser running and ramp up the orbs' initial charge. Or I could just leave everything be, take to the air, and fly to the safety uh, alone. And without fear of getting stranded in the middle of the ocean. No, that would be betraying not only Henrietta, but my dream itself. Okay. Ten yard, don't have the gold, it's fine. Hmm, so who's gonna be the one taking the fine? This guy has a pretty big lightning bolt. But now that I have mana, I think that uh, Frederick could do a pretty good job here too. Uh, yeah. Hey, Philly. A 75 damage, uh, plus 5 per uh, automaton in stack. Okay, Master Kano, thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, Tishiel, appreciate yourself, but you deal. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we'll sleep the valley immediately. Oh, uh, yeah, we read this before, so we can just move on. Mm -hmm. This fight should not be too difficult. Yeah, okay, the auto does a very good job again. I'll just take it. Uh, yeah. Let's get Frederick to fight this after all. I like the Latin Bolt, I like the Automaton det uh, detonations. Uh, he can have this item. I wonder if this increases the automaton detonation damage, actually. I have no clue. Hmm. 
I will keep... Mm, ah, no reason to. This is gonna be like the big fight of the year. Oh my. Look, look, look. Boom! Oh my god, that's quite a bit of damage. And kick by. Okay, so the Orbitemptus Fire did not increase the detonation damage. That means that it's not a fire spell. That means that the Euphrates are not immune to it. That means... Kick by. Well, soon. Also, nah. Okay, that means... Kick by. Boom. Dude, he keeps morling. No, 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 we need to, to not keep morling here. Yo, can he stop? No, it's like predetermined. Um, okay, fine, whatever. Oh no, that's not good. Okay, it has friendly fire, guys. <laughs> guys, I think it has friendly fire. Could be wrong here. Oh, that's not great. Hooked. Bye. Hmm. Okay, Frederick passed uh, Princess Palm against the lock and it trembles. His fingers make a shape. Um, make a shape and touch the lock again several times. Uh, something clicks inside the shackle as if uh, turned liquid disappears inside the case. Frederick swings the gate open and invites um, all to follow him. Well, not many is all, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I just love how the spiders explode. Yeah, it's amazing. Was failed this campaign, maybe three hours, Gek. Uh-huh, I see him. We stepped through the door that opened before Frederick, followed by a line of haplings. None of them had ever been here before. Had it been any other time, they wouldn't have been struck by the sight of the elegant laboratory, taught by a Brocadian dome. They hadn't seen anything much nicer than plain stone huts and wooden barns. But no, the villagers had, uh, had enough shocks for the last few days, and the only thing they were looking for was a chance to plop down on the grass and rub their tired feet, and we decided not to disturb the weary halfling yet, and the and first wake up the hill so that Frederick could check on his creations, being prepared for their first big flight. The sight was incredible. In the middle of a clearing surrounded by snow-capped mountains, three huge bubbles were swaying majestically in the wind. With a very large boat beneath each of each of them, I confess that even I gaped at the sight of these spider-like mechanisms moving deftly about the decks and tackle, um, tightening knots and their steel beaks and doing something else totally incomprehensible. Soon, Frederick was um, back from his inspection of these, as he called them, airships. With a hint of pride his vo uh, in his voice, he said, A job well done! My automatons all work smoothly and without error. The tanks are filled to the top with water, and all that's left is to put the orbs uh, of fire in the furnaces, and we're ready to go. I'll steer the main airship, and the mechanical assistants will repeat my maneuvers on the others. We went back, we went back to the halflings. The beautiful scenery of the valley nested between the mountains seemed to have calmed the poor villagers, perhaps even a bit too much. Some were asleep. Others were lighting their pipes. Frederick shook his head, grabbed an iron cake, an iron cone, and spoke into its top. The thing made his voice so loud that those who were resting leapt up. Enough sleeping! Go, go, let's get a move on! Time is very, very short. The demons may appear any minute now, and we will be in big trouble. 
in the building in front of you, there are supplies prepared. Not a lot, but better than nothing. Take the crates and carry them where I show you. If you don't want to starve to death during the journey, hope the lazies didn't forget the sack. Frederick said with the cone out, uh, out of his face, and I was the only one who heard him. Suddenly, someone touched my shoulder, turned around and met Tavin's gaze. He emerged silently behind me, but that was to be expected of a seasoned warrior like him. I wanted to greet him, glad that the guard had survived, but there was something in his eyes that made me hesitate. Tavin squinted at me and said, If I had no trouble tracking down and finding you, those infernal beasts will do no worse. They've got as good a null as best hunting dogs in Raffia. Give me a week's worth of provisions and a sack of your firecrackers. I'll lead them away from the valley. At the very least, I'll buy you some time. Hold him back a bit. But, Tavin, what are you talking about? We don't... We need you and your expertise. It would be suicide to go up against those beasts alone. Maybe they won't find the secret passage. Don't try to change my mind, child. If my life saves hundreds of yours, that's the price I'll pay. That's why I became a soldier. Someday, you'll understand. I sighed, and feeling weak in my legs, uh, did as he asked. Tavin slung his sack over his shoulder, looked me in the eye again, and without another word or glance back, he strode firmly out the valley. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, you have reached your destination and the uh, precious cargo intact. You can claim victory. Okay. So yeah, this was a very lore-heavy uh, mission here. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, this one is done. Oh, look at this. That's cool. Look at this, Frederick. Youthful was dying. Apple trees were still blossoming. And wheat was uh, corning up. But the stench of sulfuric ash was, all was already welcoming from the mountains and waters running down the slopes of no more dormant volcanoes were blightful. Very soon there will be no life left here, just its ugly semblance. The guests from the skies are creating. How hard it is to persuade a halfling to look upwards for the first time in his life and face his own future. There are so few of them here, and those who chose the unconceivable Maybe they alone will live on and keep the memories of our lands when it will die. Damn. The aesthetics are really cool. Yeah, Frederick with the sky ships here. Like, damn. Can we see Henrietta anywhere, I wonder? She would be a half -lane. No, this is probably Henrietta now. Maybe. I mean, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So, to defend the town of Burton from the Ogres' assault, you must defeat the, their leader Zal- oh, wait, no. Okay, so yeah, this is it. So yeah, uh, we have this mission. The town of Burton is threatened by Ogres of Ravage Roaming. Henrietta Frederick and Sam must repel their attacks and vanquish their, o uh, their Ogrish leader, Zog the Jackal. To defend the town of Burton from the Ogres' assault, you must defeat their leader Zog. Uh, the loss of Burton will lead you to defeat. Your heroes are limited to level 12, but Henrietta and Frederick will, com uh, will bring back components of the Wizard's Well and the Ring of the Magi to the next scenario. Okay. Um, let's go, shall we? Hello! My son, what is up to you? Thank, thank you. Much appreciated. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Uh, we get to choose one of the bonuses. We can start with a Spirit of Oppression. Uh, 8 with an ore or 10 mechanics. We're going to be playing on the impossible difficulty, so maybe with an ore would do me pretty well. Or we can start off with like a little bit of army. Then again, mechanics seem like pretty lame. They're just like walking tier 2 creatures. They're basically leprechauns. Or what else would be a better comparison to, the, to these? There's not many like just walky, hitty tier 2 creatures actually. <clears throat> but you can resurrect with them. Hmm. They can heal. Maybe, I mean, hmm. Cerberi, they're tier 3. <laughs> dwarves, dwarves are slow and tanky, and usually tier 3 units are slow and tanky. These are walkie hitty, not standy tanky, okay? These are different, these are different, like, concepts for units, okay? 